in today's class we'll discuss in that detail okay so in addition to that today we are going to i'm going to show a demo on your uh, catro modeling uh, if you want you can note down the steps of your statro and on monday or tuesday class ruby ma'am will give you a session to practice uh, statro right yes wind load calculation first of all we need to know why we are taking wind as a part of your uh, load calculations so it is like a wind you can uh, characterize into uh, many categories like a breeze or like a cyclone right so why we need to take a wind so wind is having uh, two aspects right two aspects of wind uh, we can share so one is the form of energy right we can use wind for power generation and for uh, uh, sailing boats and to cool down the temperature of uh, hot uh, objects right so that is one form of energy another aspect of wind is the parasitic one that is uh, in the form of load so your wind will load any object that is uh, comes on its way right so the second uh, aspect is the one we need to uh, an engineer is concerned with so since the load has to be uh, sustained by the structure with specified safety we need to consider the second object sorry second aspect how your wind is uh, creating a load on the objects on its own way right so globally you are having uh, 80 cyclones per year so what are cyclones so your wind flow generation will be based on your atmospheric pressure right differential atmospheric pressure in your news you might have heard that carter the talve mayam so some low pressure generation will be created in the inside the sea so based on your wind uh, wind flow will be fully based on your atmospheric uh, pressure if the pressure is different your wind mode will also get different based on that you will be having your monsoon winds cyclones tornadoes and all so globally uh, your entire world is uh, experiencing 80 cyclones per year in india we are experiencing six cyclones per year that will be mostly on your east coast of your uh, india east coastal part right so uh, this is the aspect of wind but why we need to consider wind on our structure wind is flowing right cyclone every year we are, uh, it is coming so why we need to consider on your structure so in olden days your population is scattered right and we are not uh, been to high rise buildings also but now the population is being increasing your standard of living is also increasing so we are moving to high rise buildings and your uh, industries are also getting increased day by day so that your population is also being increased and in old in uh, just for 20 20 days 20 years uh, back industries are very well placed outside or outside of your village uh, residential areas are or uh, omr right the tiruteri sipkat it park and your wandalur stretch so everything uh, on those both stretches are fully industrial area now you are having residential areas around that also so your populations are being uh, built up around your industries because for your uh, Yeah, employment and all so your high rise buildings industries are getting uh, numbers are getting increased so how your wind loads are getting impact on these buildings high rise buildings that one we are going to see so new buildings because of new technologies we are having glass partition building uh, facades 
uh, very new innovative materials are using in your building for your exterior architectural view. But those uh, hazards are also need to withstand your wind load, right? So wind it is a dynamic phenomenon. Dynamic means it will varies with time. So consideration of your uh, wind spectrum is necessary. Studying how your wind is getting varied that is necessary to uh, calculate wind load on your structure. In this picture, how your wind is in, uh, influenced by your topography or terrain, you can uh, come to know. Here you can see your wind is flowing and on the sea, right? Sea area, your wind is VMF. So VMF is nothing but your mean wind velocity above the terrain. Mean wind velocity above the terrain and VM is the mean wind velocity at the height of Z. You consider any height Z, random height Z. That is your mean wind velocity. VMF is the mean wind velocity above your flat terrain. Here you can consider Z as 10 meter. That is the simulation height. Why it is a simulation height? I will tell you. So on the seashore or on the sea area, we will be having the mean wind velocity uh, to a height of Z. So when the wind is moving over to your land area, land portion, you will be having hindrances like trees, small buildings, tall buildings industrial structures and all so it will be hitting and if it is less than 10 mm it will just blow in its own way right so if there is any uh, high rise structure is blocking your wind if imagine you are uh, in your seashore you, can, you, you might have seen since your beach is a flat land parallel to your uh, sea it is coming and hitting right if any uh, piers are there right or any uh, jetties are there in harbors you might have noted piers or and jetties so if your wind is hitting hit over that wall it will get splashed off your water will get splashed off right similarly if your wind is obstructed by any uh, building or any mountain or hill it will get splashed up it will move suddenly it will move upward like this right by the time your wind velocity will increase so you are obstructing the part so the entire blow of wind so Please don't imagine wind as a single line. It will blow like anything. No boundary for wind, right? So the entire uh, air molecules, when it is coming and hitting a uh, obstruction, so it will splash off with a very high velocity over the terrain. Then next to the hill, it has to come down because it is after the obstruction, it is having a very uh, wide area to spread off. So here you can see. So by the time uh, you can uh, you can compare the example of uh, while, while you are coming out of a theater or any emergency right if there is any fire accident or any emergency you'll be people will be running out of that uh, uh, exit area right so you'll move in a very faster mode because you are having more area outer side so like that here after this obstruction your wind is having a large area to expand so by the time your speed of your wind gets reduced Right, but that too up to this 10 meter height only. Here and all your molecules will be same. Your air velocity, your wind velocity will be same. Here your wind velocity will reduce. Soon after this, if it find any uh, obstruction over, here it will hit and your uh, velocity will build up. So up to 10 meter, you won't have any effects because it is having small, small obstruction, it will hit. But if there is any very bigger obstruction like a tall building or uh, hill or a mountain or a uh, dense forest, it will surely build up its velocity, move up. And then, so here we need to consider the building is going to locate it. Oh, even around your building, how many or how many uh, dense of your uh, building is? So the density of a building means number of buildings uh, within your uh, locality. That and all we need to keep on eye. So this is how your wind is influencing on your terrain and topography. And this terrain and topography factor will be including in your wind load calculations. So here you can see the wind sensitive structures. So now we might have understand. So whenever obstruction is tall, your, it is prone to wind load. Your wind load will be hitting at a very high velocity. Right? 
right so then these tall structures are your wind sensitive structures so while you are designing this structure tall buildings your chimneys towers so these are all very much prone to wind load it means effect created by wind load and these sensitive structures are very slender also right so slender when you will calling it as a slender when your lateral dimension is lesser than your uh, longitudinal dimension so so these are all very uh, uh, sensitive structures to wind because they are very tall and they will be flexible flexible to your wind mode and they'll experience a, a dynamic response to your wind they'll exhibit a dynamic response dynamic response means it will move here and there like a vibration how your coconut tree is moving for a wind right so similarly your wind your building will also tend to move for your wind load here these uh, structures are all three dimensional this i'm i'm speaking about the buildings right so these are all three dimensional so three dimensional in the sense you, you have to resolve your factors into x y and z directions and all but while in case of uh, the slender structures like chimneys and the towers and all compared to your lateral dimension this slenderness is uh, too slender this height is too long by the time this uh, chimneys and towers can be considered as a line like structure which means one dimensional like structure just like a stick how we are holding a stick so line like structure you can consider as one dimensional so the analysis will be simpler but in case of buildings and industrial uh, areas industrial towers we need you hear your lateral dimension may also be long some and your height will also be long by the time you need to resolve it as a three dimensional structure and your calculation should also be in uh, three dimensional way so that you can calculate the exact forces coming on to your building and you can design for the worst case of your load conditions right so here how your wind is flowing along your building here this dark black color uh, square you can see right imagine that is your building so here your flow around your isolated building isolated means it is only single building is there no other buildings are nearby how your wind mold wind is flowing here how it is in your fluid mechanics you might have seen this turbulent right right it will come back when it is having open space it will swirl around that building here you can see here the building next to here one building is there next to that you are having one more building so when the wind is flowing here you can see how the wind is uh, flow is disturbed or how the wind flow is getting changed because of the obstruction or because of the buildings nearby so if your building is isolated we need to consider one flow of wind and when your building is uh, surrounded by two or more buildings or too many buildings very closely spaced building by the time you can you have to uh, do a different type of calculation so this is how your wind is flowing and you can see so tall buildings after your uh, construction how to uh, how to get to know how your building will response we don't know right how your building will response for prior that we are doing analysis and all so in stat pro and all we'll do modeling and doing the analysis but before that how your building will behave whether it can withstand the wind load or not for tall buildings and very important buildings and historical structures if you are going to build it uh, now by the time you need to subject your model of your building before your wind tunnel so here you can see wind will be blown through this machine right so here you can see so based on the particular area if you are designing it for chennai then here you need to consider for that 50 meter per second or more than that even if chennai might have experience a previous cyclone okay in 2017 or uh, then so those previous cyclone speed you should uh, fix here so that your wind tunnel will give you that wind speed and wind pressure over this area so the nearby neighboring buildings also you need to model now model in the sense at least you need to create a uh, obstruction 
So this is fully based on the locality of your building. Whether your building, newly constructed building, is going to have a obstruction or not. Already, is there is any obstruction, any buildings or not? If it is no, there is no obstruction. It is a very plain area. You can uh, remove this uh, obstruction. These are just wooden blocks, right? The center one is the real uh, structure, which means a model of your structure. And here all your uh, wooden blocks. So similar to the obstructions as such in your site. This you might have studied in, uh, I think, uh, fluid mechanics, right? Prototype model and all. Right? Similitude. So here, how your building is getting response for that when speed? Here, this model you will be fixing strain gauges. So this from the strain gauge, how your building is deflected from the strain gauge, you can note down, and then you can record the response of your building. So this is this model is the replica of your prototype prototype means the real structure so the real structure how is going to behave on the wind that one we are studying inside the wind tunnel right so this wind tunnel you might uh, you can see in uh, structural engineering research center uh, serc taramani it is there so on an open day you just uh, students can visit over there i think sir uh, have you taken them to serc open day no, I think, oh uh, yeah, it will be coming on the month of June only. Okay. So, if possible, just have a visit on open day to ACRC. There you can get a chance to uh, see this wind tunnel and they'll be explaining all the uh, experiments what are going inside ACRC. Right? June 24th, it seems, that the open day. Try to visit over there. So now we are going to calculate your wind uh, load. So if you are having a pen and note, please take a note. So no need of write the questions and all. Just note down the highlighted parts alone. So you are about to calculate your wind pressure and design forces on your walls and roofs. So here the building is a pitched roof. So double side pitched roof. The building is having just note down the dimension alone. Building dimension is 10 meter by 50 meter and the height is. 5 meter. So here we have to calculate different, uh, just now we have seen right above 10 meter your wind is having a different uh, uh, flow and less than 10 meter your wind is having a different uh, flow diagram. So if here the height is 5 meter which is less than 10 so that you can follow as such. So if it is more than 10 just you, the height criteria alone you need to consider two different pressures you need to consider that's all. The plan dimension is 10 meter by 50 meter and the height is 5 meter. The location is Bihar. Right? If they are giving the any uh, village or any area inside uh, a state, they might have uh, given the state also. Right? Because in your code book, uh, all this, for the states alone, they have given your uh, wind speed, basic wind speed. So Bihar, the same Bihar you could not find on your code book, Patna capital of Bihar, the partner will be there in your code book. From that, you can find your wind speed. So it is an industrial area having 500 meter inside open land. It's on the open land, right? Fairly level topography. Fairly level topography means Is there any obstruction or hindrance? Can you hear me? Response? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma so the walls of the buildings are having 20 openings. The opening size also you can note down. 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter size and the roof sheeting GC. GC roof sheeting and your roof angle is 15 degree. How much inclination? And you have to calculate the local wind pressure on your roof and also the wall cladding. So the spacing of truss and the column is given as 5 meter center to center, longitudinal direction. 
and your purlin spacings are given at 1.4 meter center to center and your collar gable ends are at 5 meter center to center you can just note on this pick this 10 meter by 5 meter a uh, 50 meter and your height is 5 meter and your in your picture itself if they are given the angle of your wind 0 and uh, 90 degree right if they are given for 90 degree then you have to refer that particular chart on your wind uh, code book if they are given 0 degree you can use the another chart so just in the table you need to note down the values accordingly so this 0 degree may be given in your question itself or they may have they may have insist on your picture so so this 0 degree is the inclination of your wind so 90 degree means it will hit in this direction along the 10 meter okay. so why we uh, uh, for this uh, structure your compared to your 90 degree your 0 degree is most uh, worst case because here it is 50 meter length right when your building when your wind is hitting over here your this much size of your building is there to resist your wind but in case of 0 degree you can see because only 10 meter is there so if your only 10 meter size is there if your building is uh, if your wind is hitting along the 0 degree in this direction it will ready uh, it was uh, very well it, it will get toppled or it will be thrown away right so zero is the worst case for this type of building right so for any building we have to calculate both zero degree and 90 degree but keep in mind whenever there is a long dimension is there along the wind direction okay along the wind direction here your wind is in this direction along the wind direction the dimension is 10 meter so only smaller dimension is there compared to 50 meter so it will it will very much uh, topple your building but if in case of 90 degree if it is hitting in this direction this much uh, area is there 50 by 5 meter is there so that it will not create too much uh, effect so 0 degree is worst case shall i move on to next slide hope you have noted the data yes so here we need to note down uh, in the question we have seen it's bihar right this is your is 875 code book So in your code book appendix A, you can calculate the basic wind speed for important cities and towns, right? So from Agra to Vishakhapatnam, you are having uh, the entire list of cities and along with its wind speed. So here we are it will not be available. Bhopal, Bilai is there. Instead, you can get Patna, right? Here you can see Patna. Hope my screen is visible, right? Yeah. So Patna. Uh, it is having the basic wind speed in terms of meter per second so 47 meter per second we need to note down so first step wind zone so wind zone comes under zone 4 so basic wind speed is vb is equal to 47 meter per second so this is as per section 5.2 of appendix a so design factors this is the risk coefficient factor in the formula and i will put 111 because the values will be very much uh, uh, less only 1.98.9 or like that anyway i like to know how to calculate this risk coefficient factor so it is based on your table 1 so how to calculate this k1 and what is the risk behind this So table one, you have to go. Hope everyone are having your code book. Even not now, you can refer it back. So 
here's your table one. The risk five. Yes. So this is your risk coefficient factor for different classes of your building. So we have the basic wind speed of forty-seven, right? So it is a uh, for a general building you can say for a default you can take for fifty years. So if if it is a very temporary shed, by the time you can go for the second uh, category, right? And if uh, for very important buildings, for hospital buildings, power plants, you can take the design life of the structure as hundred. But for general, all the buildings and structure, you can consider the life of the building as fifty. And here you need to match it with your uh, basic wind speed for forty seven. Your K one is one. noted and the next is your terrain and height factor so terrain and height factor that is k2 terrain and height factor k2 how to calculate this k2 go to code book here table 2 you need to refer so in table 2 here it is that is k2 Factor to obtain design wind speed variation with respect to height and terrain for different classes of buildings, right? So for here you can see class A, B, C, and terrain category is also terrain one, two, three, and four. So what is this A, B, C? That one we have to see here. Yeah, here it is. So here this is class A. So the structures and components such as cladding and roofing. So, which are having the horizontal and vertical dimensions less than twenty. So, when you are seeing a dimension, don't get uh, confused with your height. Okay. So, because wind, you are uh, especially uh, always you will be having an eye on height. But here, the class A, B, C are based on the horizontal and lateral dimensions, vertical dimensions. So, when it is less than twenty, uh, here you can choose it for class A. If your structure is having the horizontal or vertical dimension, vertical is height also. Sometimes your uh, horizontal dimension may be greater than your height. In our case, right? Our height is just fifty five uh, meter, but our horizontal dimension is fifty meter, right? So just uh, see to that whether in your problem the dimensions are given as uh, height, length, and width. Calculate accordingly. So, if your horizontal dimension is between twenty and fifty, it will be under the class B. If it is the any of the dimension is greater than fifty meter, it comes under class C. So, you can take it as a class B structure since it is fifty uh, meter, right? So, class B structure you can take. So, and here you can see class B is there, but which category? Terrain category one, two, three, four, and all there. How to find that? Here in 5.3.2.1 in your code book page number eight 5.3.2.1 here you are having the terrain height and structure size factor. Here the category one so terrain category one means it is exposed to open terrain which means it is a very plain area no obstructions are there only one one your building is going to stand over there right. So exposed open terrain is there no obstructions. Any building is there? Its height is all that. Right. So just one building will be standing. So this category includes your sea coast and flat treeless plains. So if your uh, terrain is mentioned like that, you can take it up take category one. If you are having very well scattered uh, obstructions, well scattered obstructions means here and there you are having a building. That too, their height is in the range of one point five to ten meter. By the time you can choose the category two, so where and all you are having air fields, your open parklands, 
there you can consider it as a category 2 and category 3 your terrain with numerously closed spaced obstructions so closely spaced next to next you are having uh, buildings and the height of the buildings is also uh, in the range of 10 meter right so closely spaced buildings you can consider category 3 so industrial uh, areas towns residential areas you can consider category 3 and the category 4 which is the one which is having closely spaced structure that too with tall structures all the structures around your building are very much tall and everything are closely spaced if, if, consider if it is around 25 meter height of the building is also there by the time you can choose your category as 4 right so very open no obstruction means category 1 few obstruction means category 2 closed obstruction is category 3 Closed obstruction with tall buildings, that's category 4, right. So, ours here they have considered as a industrial area for 500 meter inside open land on a fairly level topography, open land. So, which means uh, lesser or fewer obstruction is around your building, right. So, category b you can take right category b sorry a class b you have chosen and category 2 we have chosen right pair or sorry one minute fairly level means uh, no obstructions are there or you can consider it as category 2 also or category 1 so, for category 1, no obstruction is there. So, fairly level means you can consider it as category 1. So, for category 1 and class B, what is the K2 factor? We have to see. So, category 1, class B, you can see here. So, for the height of here, the chart starts from 10 meter only, but your height is only 5 meter, right? Here, chart starts from 10 meter since your height is less than this you can consider as round of it as 1 okay so here k2 and next k3 is the topography factor based on 5.3.3.1 yes here here is your topography factor. Here you need to uh, find whether your wind direction, your wind slope, how much it is getting, hitting your uh, building. So, wind slope is greater than about 3 degree. Right? And the value of K3 may be taken equal to 1. The value of K3 is confined in the range of 1 to 1.36. So, it will range between 1 to 1.36 for the slope greater than 3 degree. Right? So, if it is uh, with, within 3 degree, you can consider it as 1. So, here this K3 is based on your wind slope direction, upwind slope direction. So, here in your problem, it is given as 0 degree, right. In the picture, you can see your wind slope is in 0 degree. So, here you can consider it again K3 is 1 because when it is above 3 degree you can consider it as 1 to 1.36 you can interpolate it since it is 0 degree here you can consider it as 1. So, K1, K2, K3 we have found and next wind directionality factor. So, this wind directionality factor it is fully based on your KD that is KD is 9-1 it is based on section 1-1. So, here 6.1 in load can be calculated as a building whole or an individual structure or individual structure with a cladding, right. So, here the directionality factor, whether it is a 0 degree or it is a 90 degree, we can consider as 1. In, usually in industry, we will be considering this KD is also 1, right. Here they have taken as 0 0.9, but to round off or to take it as a worst case, we can consider KD as 1. 
and average area factor that is ka how to calculate that ka that is fully based on how much area is going to contribute to your wind that is tributary area of your uh, building so your tributary area for columns how to find it for columns 5 into 5. Your columns will be 5 meter height. Right? And your every columns are spaced at every 5 meter. So once in every 5 meter you are having a column and your height of the building is 5 meter. So till the height your columns will, uh, will be standing. So this 5 into 5 you will get the tributary area for your column. This one. 25 meter square. And next is your tributary area of your trusses so tributary area of a truss here you can see this is the triangular shape of your truss so the width is 10 so half into base into this height so half into base into this height that one they have mentioned as 2 into 5 into that since you are having 2 uh, area this one this triangular portion 2 places we are having they are having 2 and this 5.176 is your slope portion of your truss. So 2 trusses two, not a 2 truss the 2 triangular portion so 2 into uh, half into that is 10 by 2 into this height. So 51.76 you are getting and tributary area for purlins. So purlins here they have spaced at 1.4 meter center to center. Right. So purlins are spaced at 1.4 meter center to center. So the 1.4 meter for a length of 5 meters. Right. So that is your tributary area of your purlin. So here you can see the inclined length of purlin they have taken as 5 meter. So this slope you will be having one area of purlin and another uh, slope another pitch you are having a another range of purlin. So here, here we are considered about only one direction right. So this one this is your exposed area to wind. So along this how much purlin area is contributing. So one point for every 1.4 meter you are having a purlin and it is of length 5 meter. So tributary area of your purlin is calculated which is 7 meters square. So tip for column, truss and purlin we have calculated and the next is for your short walls along your wind direction. Why we are concentrating on short wall because this is this short wall is the one which is going to resist your wind. Here is the distribution area right but it is the one going to withstand right. So only it is considered as a worst case. So the walls area, how much area is the uh, walls? This 10 into 10 is the width of your building and height 5 is the height of your building. 10 into 5 plus the triangular portion also you need to calculate. So half into base into rise of your building, rise of your truss. This one point base into this rise of your truss. 1.34. Right. So we have found K1, K2, K3, KD and area averaging factor KA. And next we need to calculate the permeability of the building. Perme permeability means how much it is based on your openings of your building. So why we need to consider openings? Why not you can consider it as a closed structure? So openings means Skitting over this side, it can already we have discussed your wind side of building. If there is no, no opening, it will tend to hit your roof, right? That suction pressure will be there. So it will be uh, more in case of an enclosed structure. So we have to consider it as a if opening is available, surely we can include that opening. If there is no opening as per the requirement, by the time we have to concentrate on your roof also. In your structure, your opening is available. So 20 number of openings of 1.15 1.5 by 1.5 meter size. 
so here we need to uh, find the permeability of the building so how to find the permeability your percentage of uh, area of opening divided by your area of your wall right so the area of wall is four walls are there all of 5 meter height so 50 into 10 into 5 so 5 5 is the height of your truss so two two diamond two sides you are having 10 meter length walls another two sides you are having 50 meter length walls right this 10 meter and this side 10 meter two sides you are having 10 meter and this 50 meter and the wind hitting area another side you are having 50 meter multiplied with this height you are getting the area of your walls around your building total area of your uh, walls and next to your roof Two times of your 0.5 into 1.34 into 10. So 10 is this one. Two a uh, triangular shape is available. Half into base into height. Okay. Now we have calculated the area of the wall. So all around the walls plus your triangular portion you have included, and you are getting 6.13.4 meter square. And area of openings. So area of openings. We got your twenty openings of one point one five meter, one point five meter wide. So twenty into one point five into one point five, you are getting forty five meter square. Right? So how much is the percentage of opening? So here you can calculate it. So the answer is seven point three three six. So once you get the percentage, one minute. Yes. Sorry for the interruption. So here you need to go to your section six point two point two point two. Six x here six point two point two point two. Here you are going to find your external pressure coefficient for your. Uh, Pitched roofs. It's available. So, if your uh, uh, permeability percentage is less than or is less than five percentage, it is very much uh, no permeability. You can say if it is in the range of five to twenty percentage, you can uh, find it as medium permeability. If it is more than twenty percentage, you can consider it as a open structure. Open structure means no walls around your uh, structure, like this, right? So, it will be calculated according your Uh, walls deducted by your number of openings. Right? Yes. So you, you can your structure can be considered as a medium permeable structure, medium permeability. And next, so now we need to find your design wind pressure. So this. K three. That is for, so. Once you calculated V Z, you can find the P Z design wind pressure. V Z is the design wind speed, and P Z is the design wind pressure. So that can be calculated by multiplying with point six into V Z square. You can get this, 
and Pz Pd that is your design wind pressure Pz into Kd into Ka. So Pz is this one, Kd is 0.9 and Ka. So Ka is the area factor. How to calculate it using your pressure coefficients. So internal pressure coefficient and external pressure coefficient. So why we need to calculate, already we have calculated the pressure, right? Then why we need to include this? So once you include that area, then only it will be coming in terms of your uh, pressure that has to be distributed over your truss. So this internal pressure coefficient and external pressure coefficient con uh, will explain how your uh, wind is going to affect your trusses, right? If, if it is closed, enclosed. We need to include the suction pressure, pressure inside your truss. So this internal pressure coefficient and external pressure coefficient calculation is the must one important. So here your CPI minus CP, CPE minus CPI into A into PD. Here you can see this formula 6.2.1. CPE minus CPI A into PD. So here A is the surface area of your structural element, the entire surface area, and PD is the design wind pressure. CPE and CPI we are going to calculate now. So this CPI for this your buildings has to be analyzed for pressure 0.5 from inside the building and from outside the building you have to consider as a minus 0.5 so only it is considered as plus or minus 0 0.5 right inside the building your pressure coefficient should be considered as plus 0.5 and then minus 0.5 is for your uh, outside because it is it will be having your pulling effect right so both plus or minus we need to take an into account so what we will be having two equations if plus cpi what is the value of f and if you are using minus of cpi that is minus 0.5 what is the value of f out of which which one is the maximum f we will be using for your load analysis so your external pressure coefficient if using your table 6 or oh sorry using your table 4 you can calculate it So for mono roofs and all you can calculate uh, from table 6. So here you will be seeing uh, the terms EF and GH. What is EF and GH? So here you can see uh, the entire size of your building is divided into two halves. Out of that one half you can have this E, F, G and H. Right? So here H is the height of your building, L is the length of your building and W is the width of your building. Theta is the angle of your wind, upwind slope, how much angle it is hitting your building. So E, F, G, H, how to find this E, F, G, H again. Right. Here, in this external pressure coefficient for pitched roof, yeah, our building is in rectangular shape, the roof is pitched. So, ha so you have to choose table 5. Here you can see for table 4 external pressure coefficient for walls of rectangular cladded building. For walls you need to consider table 4 and for roof we have to consider table 5. In your question you are asked to find both walls and roofs. Right? Yes. So now we are going to calculate for walls. So for this, you need to find the building uh, plan ratio. Plan ratio by W, length of your building divided by the width. So your length is 10 meter, your width is, sorry, your length is 50 meter, your width is 10 meter. So 50 divided by 10, you'll be getting 5, right? So 
for table 5 if your length by width is you have to check it is uh, 50 divided by 5 you'll be getting 5 and you are building height ratio height to width your height is for external coefficient for pitched roof for roof while you are calculating roof you need to find the building height ratio building height ratio means height divided by width your height is 5 meter divided by your width is 10 meter so 5 divided by 10 you will be getting 0.5 right 5 divided by 10 it is 0.5 so the first load uh, condition when your h by w ratio building height ratio is less than or equal to 0.5 you have to use this uh, portion of your chart right so and your wind angle here they have given for 0 degree and for 90 degree our wind angle mentioned in the question is 0 degree right and your roof angle your roof angle in your question it is given as 15 degree here 15 is not available you are having 0 5 10 20 and all so if you are not having that value we need to interpolate it between 10, 10 and 20 so 10 and 20 for 10 you are having e and f is not ef it is e and f okay for e and f you are having uh, 1.2 and 0 0.4 so one, once you interpolate, you will get 0 0.5. That is the mid value, right? Between 1.2 and 1.4, you are mid, if you are getting interpolation, here your 15 is also the mid value. So you will be getting minus 0 0.8. So for E and F, you will be getting minus 0 0.8. Here you can see. E minus 0 0.8, F minus 0 0.8 for wind incident angle of 0 degree. And for G and H, we need to calculate now. For G, H, for the height to width ratio of 0 0.5 and for the roof angle of 15 degree, your G and H is minus 0 0.4. Maximum all the values are around 0 0.4. Right. So both G and H are 0 0.4. Here you can note down 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4. And this is for 90 degree. So for 90 degree, the same for 15 degree inclination, you can note down minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.7. So, the mid value will be minus 0 0.75. Here, both the values are 0 0.6. So, it will also be 0 0.6. Here you can see minus 0 0.75, minus 0 0.75 and both are 0 0.6. And for roof. Right, the positive internal pressure. So the uh, pressure inside your roof, which will be acting in the upwards because to, due to the suction pressure, it will be acting away from your roof. So we need to consider the so the positive pressure will be acting towards your roof, and your negative pressure will be acting away from your roof. In this picture, you can see. Here. here you can see the positive pressure means it will acting towards your roof. Negative pressure we need to consider away from your roof. So the positive internal pressure will be added to negative external pressure coefficient and vice versa. So internal pressure CPI, positive internal pressure should be added to your negative internal pressure. And next is for the design pressure coefficient for walls. Now we have calculated for roof. Next is for the roof. The chart 4. Right. W. H by W is height by. Height is 5. Width is 10. So it is 0 0.5. And L by W. L is the length of the building 50. And the width is 10. So, 50 by 10, you are getting 5. That is for your CPE for your walls. So, with this ratio, you can find out for the walls.
for 0 degree and 90 degree. Your hit angle is 0 and 90. Your L by W, here they have given up to 2. Building plant ratio is, here they didn't mention the height by width. It can be greater than 20. And here L by W is equal to 2 alone they have given. But our is for uh, 5. So you can consider as the maximum case is this one. So for 0 and 90 degree, you can note down for A, B, C and D. For your walls, you will be having the parameters A, B and C because on the plan. But for your roof, you will be having E, F, G and H. Right. So here maximum is given us to here you can take this one 0 degree and 90 degree. For this, your local CP is minus 1.25 they have taken. So, for the use of your local pressure coefficients, the design pressure PD will be computed with Ka as equal to 1. So, here it's everything is less than your 0 0.7, 0 0.5 and all. Here you can finally, they have uh, rounded your Ka, this one here, right? So, this Ka as 1. Yes. So, once they have considered Ka, as 1, they can calculate this PD also. So, PD will be same as 1.193. This has to be employed in your equation. PD, this 1.193 into KA. KA is also 1. So, the final value of P, uh, PD is design wind pressure is 1.193. So, this 1.193 into area of your building into CPE minus CPI. So, CPE for walls and for yes so your cpe is minus 1.25 that you have to consider and your cpe is plus or minus 0.5 sorry yes ah. so cpe is minus 1.25 cpi we are having two values plus or minus 0.15 so, you have to employ this equation here. A is the area of a building and PD we have calculated. So, you will be getting two forces along uh, F with one, F, F1 one and F2. So two values you will be getting along with which one is the maximum value you have to calculate for your equation. Right. So, here is the one. Here they have included that KD also. So KD is uh, our uh, one only we have taken. For I am I have taken one. So if you are want, you can take it as 0.9 also. As per your uh, chart, as per your wind diagram, you can take it as 0.9. Usually we will be considering this also one. So this is your total wind pressure, design wind pressure. So the design wind pressure includes all the uh, factors that is. So, V is at VB is equal to VB into K1, K2, K3. VB is the basic wind speed. K1, K2, K3 all are most maximum one. So, how to find this K1, K2, K3? KA and KD we have seen. And in addition to that, we have to include your external pressure coefficient and internal pressure coefficient. Internal pressure coefficient is plus or minus 5. And your external pressure coefficient for walls and for roof, we need to calculate separately. So, for, for that, we have referred chart table 4 and table 5. Out of that, we got CP is 1.25. CPE is 1.25. So, minus 1.25, minus of 0 0.5, you will get one equation. And you can find out. And that force, that is final output we are going to give on your stat flow. For your stat Uh, just be a minute. Uh, please wait. I'll uh, open stat row. It may take a while.
So once you are opening uh, Startro, you'll be getting this uh, new project. So inside, you'll be getting the project task. So once you click the new project, you can get this uh, dialog box, space, plane, floor, truss and all. So there is uh, no hard and fast rule that you have to use only the truss, right? You can use the space also so that uh, any, any structure can be created inside the space. The file name, is it your wish, structure one, trust one, building one, you can calculate anything, right? But location, keep it always in a folder because your STAD, it won't create only one file. It will have your support files will be very large and uh, numerous files it will be taking. So if you simply save it on a desktop, your desktop will get filled. Right? So inside your desktop or any of your folder, you can create your Or previously, you can uh, create a folder. Here, you can give a link also. Okay. So, here, the next is your units. Here, it's a meter or a kilonewton. So, all the lengths will be in meter and the loads will be in terms of kilonewton. So this is the universal uh, units, SI units you are giving. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, drawing structure in terms of feet, right, you can very well go foot and inches, you can practice also. But for your easy understanding purpose, you can take it as a meter and kilonewton because that's the units you are going to use in your problems. So next you can have here where you want to go. Add beam, add plate, add solid. Even inside this add beam, if you're going, you can create all the plates, structures, everything you can create. Simply you just click it and finish. So you, uh, for your file, it is open. Here is the, uh, this is the working space. Whatever you're drawing, you have to create over here. Right? So you'll be getting a grid like this. So for this, you can, you can close it. Simply you can uh, create a grid and you can work on that. Uh, it will be somewhat confusing. So, I will create one by one. And one more thing is, here you can, from geometry, here one run structure wizard is there. Right? So geometry, if you are taking run structure wizard, here you can have your met, uh, library. Library in the sense, so truss, if you are having uh, flat truss, warrant truss, if your structure is having is any of one of the types, you can very well choose it from there and you can use it. And similarly for frames also, bay frame, grid frame, roof frames and all that. So if you're choosing the frame, it will ask you how many base, how many length of your frame, um, along the length side, along the width, how much you want. Like this it will ask. So what is the length of your frame? What is the height of your frame? What is the width? And how many bays you want along the length, how many bays you want? Like that it will ask. So if you're giving that, it will be ready-madely formed. But since you are new to uh, Star Pro, just I'll be uh, going from the basic form. So this page is your node. So in Star Pro, you are having too many modes: modeling mode, building planner mode, post processing mode, foundation design, steel design, your concrete design, connection designs. So everything you can do in this. So since you are creating a model, you should be in the modeling mode. So in this modeling mode, you are having uh, geometry, general analysis, design, print, and all. So one command can be accessed from means of icons, or from the modes, or from the taskbars. So if you are using this geometry and this command, that is very much uh, sufficient just at the beginning stage of learning Star Pro. You have to stick on this geometry, and you have to follow this uh, command taskbar. So one by one, you can do. So first is the geometry, you have to create the nodes. So what? And the rest, your file, edit, view, and all you might have gone, right? So file, you'll be having that save, save as, print, everything will be there. And edit, I'll show you. The take picture, copy picture, the screenshot you can take. And view. So if you're having too many floors, uh, 
20 story or even 3 story, the particular story you can select and you can view that alone because viewing an entire structure, it will be confusing for you. So for one, viewing any one of the floor or any one of the element, you can go for this view and new view. If you are giving, you can get it. So let's move on to that uh, geometry and nodes. So here one page will be opening in this. Here, first node you can give it as 0, 0, 0, x, y, z, just 0, 0. So keep in mind just geometry and comments is enough for you. Geometry, nodes. So inside this nodes, you can get, create as many numbers of nodes you want. So the span of truss is just 10 meters, right? Along the width, it is 10 meters. So I'm creating 10. Click. Ma'am, your voice is not audible. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Ah, yes, ma'am. Now it is audible. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. So, go to geometry, add beam. Oh, it is locked.
Let me try once again. Save. Go to the location. Structure two. Since it is already existing, it is not uh, giving you. Add beam and finish. Now it is open. So geometry you can select from here or from the taskbar also. Anything you can choose. Zero. Add beam here you can see. Add beam from point to point, add beam between midpoints, add beam by perpendicular direction. Now you can choose add beam from point to point. Here, like this, one node to and like this horizontally. And similarly, if you want to create a dress at the height, we need one more uh, node, right? So, at the midpoint, you can create x is 5 meter, and your y height, height of uh, the dress should be more than this. So, above 3. So, 5 plus 3, it is, it will be 8. Your voice is not audible. Still, it is not audible, sir. Hello, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Now, sir. Sir, now? Hi, it's not audible. Sir. Hello. Audio is on only. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh, sir. Is it not audible? Ma'am, your voice is, voice is audible, ma'am. Audible, right? Shall I proceed? Ah, yes, ma'am. Okay. So now it's 12. I'll just uh, finish off in two minutes. So that modeling part you can complete. Modeling and support conditions you can complete, right? So in this, you can uh, find I section, channel section, T section, angle, tube, anything you can choose. So out of this, ISA, so just Indian standard angle, 50 by the first, very first size I'm taking, or you can say this, 50. ISA 50 by 50 by 3. So 50, 50 mm, 50 mm by 3. Right? So add. 
So once you add, it will be coming to your property table. So this one, you can select all the elements. By dragging, you can select all the elements. And using this tab, here it will be asking assign to selected beams. So this command is very much useful if you are going for different sections. Since we are going for only one section, select all the things and give it as a assign to beam. So it will be assigned. Yes. So it is R1. Since it is a reference section 1, it is showing it as R1, R1 everywhere. And here, your trust need to be supported, right? So these two points, you can give it as a fixed support. How to fix the support? Here again, the commands mode. Here go to support specifications. Commands, support specifications. Here pinned, fixed, fixed, but spring. Fixed, but spring is your roller. So go to fixed. Again, that uh, support table will be open. Here fixed, it is, you have to click it and add. So the support uh, tab is open here. Click this support. Use cursor to assign. At which node you are going to give the support. So assign. Here your cursor will change to your support icon. <clears throat> like this you can give. Right. Next. Go to commands. <clears throat> your loading. So the primary load. Go to loading. Primary load. DL. Add. Once you add, it will come to your load definition box. Next, same live code. Give it as L L. Add. Right. So today, just we can see this uh, two loads alone. Right. So inside the dead load, if you go and add, it will ask you too many uh, uh, type of load, whether it is a self weight member load or nodal load and all. Give it a self weight, and the direction is Y. Your self weight is acting in the gravity direction Y. And your factor is minus 1. It is acting in the downward direction. So you have to give minus 1. If you give plus 1, it will be acting in the upward direction. So always all the load should be in the minus 1. Right? So gravity loads I am saying. And self weight, you have to select it and assign to view. Assign to view means within this view, what are the elements are there. For that, your self weight will be added. Assign. So once it is assigned, so even though if you are clicking self weight, your all the uh, self weight of the element will be added. And next, again add it. And your mem here your uh, proof sheetings and your Perlin loads that has to be given in terms of uniform load. So for that your uniform load you can give just two kilonewton. For your understanding purpose, I'm saying if I give two, it will act in upward direction. So give minus two. Add. So for your uh, dead loads and your electrical plumbing loads and all I am giving roof including your roof sheets I am giving it as minus 2 so click on that it will be acting on your uh, this pictured portion only so use cursor to assign if you use cursor to assign you can choose the element here and here like this it will be added and coming to your live load so live load it will be having very much feeble amount of live load on your uh, trust so again it is a nodal load means it's like a point force point load member load means like it will be a udl so here also you can give your live load maximum it will be one just to show your uh, difference i'll be showing it as 1.5 here added again this live load has to be spreaded over this bottom cord also because men will be standing over there also so all the Use cursor to assign. Assign. You can choose this one, this one, and also this bottom card. Right. And again, go to commands. You can go for your load combinations. Load combinations. For your understanding, you can have it as 1.5 times of dead load plus live load. So here, available load case is dead load. Move to this side. Available load cases, live load. Move to this side. Here, you, here the factor, load factor, you have to change it as 1.5 and 1.5. Right? It will automatically include in your structure. And next, go to command again. So, here analysis there. Perform analysis. Just give OK. And go to analysis. Run analysis. Save. 
the program is running. So here you can see zero errors and zero warning. So if the if it is showing any error, you need to again recheck your structure. If it is your warning, it is of less important. But see to that, no warnings it is giving. But uh, uh, warnings are you can neglect. But if there is an error, your file won't run, your structure won't take the uh, loads, and the entire structure is will not be considered as good one. The loading something default in that structure. So if there is any error, please look into your structure. Warning you can neglect, right? So here uh, you can see the icons, FX, FY, and all. So if you want to see the bending moment, you can click on this M is it. Here you can see M is it, right? M is it means bending moment along the Z direction. FY is the shear force. I can show in an exaggerated way. Here's the scale so that you can view clearly how the bending moment is. And shear force. And changing the scale alone. Right? Here you can see the shear force, how it is changing, right? For a particular member, like how you draw the NBMD diagram. Bending moment, you can see. If you have in your structural analysis, you might have uh, drawn a frame, single frame like this, right? Your bending moment in this fashion. So if you note on the steps, Monday it will be easy for you to start uh, your uh, chart pro. So once I am giving command here, you can work on your, uh, work it on your system also. Right? So you have noted. So this is the basics of stat pro. So how to uh, give the wind load, how to analyze it, everything we can discuss in your Monday and uh, Tuesday class. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Sir? Sir, shall I stop? Ma'am, can you hear me? Or am I unable to hear you? I don't know. Ma'am?